And how are we? Uh, this is Dr. Ruben Valdez of IHCMiami.com and DrValdez.com. Um, today I want to bring up a topic that um, I, I believe is becoming more and more prevalent, more and more important in the conversation of healing and functional medicine, and that is the topic of mold. Um, I want to bring this topic because I just accepted a patient yesterday into care that presented with almost 10 different autoimmune conditions. One of them in the primary suspicion was a thyroid disorder. And so we've, you know, we've seen so many people talk about uh, thyroid and Hashimoto's and all of the known triggers in food and in environment and in chemicals. However, what we're finding is that mold is becoming um, an ever-present, uh, a more and more consistent driver of autoimmune disease than we would ever believed believed it to be before. In addition to that, we're, we're also seeing um, mold infections driving even more severe disorders like Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis. So I wanted to dedicate a few minutes to kind of bring this into light and give you some information that I think could be tremendously useful. So the first thing is that not all forms of mold are bad mold, right? There's um, green mold, there's mold that when it grows on human surfaces it'll look white, but the mold that we really have to be very aware of is black mold. There's certain strains of black mold that can be very harmful and very infectious uh, to human beings and even to other animals. And so um, the thing about mold is that most of the time if it's affecting you, whether in your home, in your workplace, you're probably not aware that it's even there. Sometimes mold can grow in AC ducts, it can grow underneath tile, it can grow in bathrooms, it can grow um, in the roofing and in the attic, in places where it sometimes can be very, very difficult to spot. And in addition to that, a lot of people believe that with mold infections, the only or primary symptoms are going to be respiratory, when in fact this is not necessarily so. Many people can actually have mold infections and not present like a clinically um, uh, um, uh, presentation. It, can't, it doesn't necessarily present as a respiratory presentation. For some people, they might start feeling fatigued and tired, foggy, difficulty concentrating. They might feel more swollen. They might start seeing changes in their ability to lose weight or to be energized. And for some, it might manifest as something even more severe, such as skin rashes, um, neurological symptoms, sometimes gastrointestinal disorders, constipation, diarrhea, all of these things. And so there are a few things that I want to be able to discuss um, as far as mold. The first one, very simple, um, not everybody is um, super susceptible to developing a chronic illness due to mold infection, but in many genetically predisposed individuals, mold infections can be very, very harmful. Secondly, mold is a very difficult infection to treat. It's not like a bacterium where you can take an antibiotic and go home. It's not like a typical fungal infection in the gut or in, in the uh, vagina or in the mouth where you would take an azole drug and it, you would get rid of it. Uh, mold, in, mold infections are very difficult and they're very complex and they change a lot of different things in physiology to be able to get rid of them. It's a multi-step process. So the first thing is properly diagnosing the presence of a mold infection. There are a couple of markers and two of them are pretty readily available from most commercial labs now. Um, one of them is called C4A. This one can be easily performed through some Quest drawing sites. Not every single Quest site will have the ability to perform a C4A because it requires a very strong center, centrifuge and it also requires dry ice for transportation. The second one is called TGFB1 or Transforming Human Growth Factor Beta 1. Uh, this one is available both in Quest and LabCorp, and it's easier to perform. Um, C4A is a lot more sensitive, so if there is presence and reactivity to, um, to a mold spore in your body, 
that's always going to test positive. It tends to be more sensitive. TGFB1 is not as sensitive. If it's high, then it's definitely diagnostic. But for some people, the infection might be present, and yet the marker might not be high enough to be out of range. And so those are probably the very first two steps that anybody that suspects that they might have a mold-related disorder or that they might be exposed to mold, whether in their home or in their, in their business, uh, that would probably be a really good place to start for almost anybody. And so uh, mold issues have been tied into the gut, they've been tied into thyroid, to diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, scleroderma, psoriasis, and some of the most common indicators that um, you might have a mold infection or having mold sensitivity, mold issues, uh, might be as simple as feeling fatigued, um, having brain fog. For some people, starting to develop different types of allergies, sometimes more and more environmental allergies, sometimes more and more skin sensitivities, sometimes more and more food sensitivities, because the immune system is trying to go after this infection that it's not being successful at getting rid of. Most mold infections infect the sinuses, and they'll infect underneath the eyes, um, uh, the posterior sinuses, and for many people, one of the signs that they have a chronic mold infection can be darkness, dark circles underneath the eyes. And so definitely something to be looking out for, especially if, let's say, you know, you're out and about, you feel a little bit better, all of a sudden you go home and boom, you kind of crash, you don't feel as well as you did when you're outside of your house. Maybe you travel and when you travel you feel a lot better. When you're back home or back at work, your symptoms kind of seem to kick back in. Those are all good, good indicators and signs and symptoms that you might be struggling struggling with mold. And so um, I believe that this is a very important topic because sadly it's something that is rarely ever talked about. We're seeing more and more people developing very serious illnesses including this poor girl that we just took in that was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis um, with the beginning stages of it and we strongly believe that her immune system is being driven uncontrollably by this type of infection. So if you suspect it, do find somebody that's trained, somebody that's certified in doing a good job. It's not easy to do a good job in this field, so definitely um, try to search for somebody that is well-versed and that understands all the steps that are actually necessary to successfully treat these infections. That is all for today. Uh, this is Dr. Ruben Valdez. That's all that I have for you today. Check us out at drvaldez.com and ihcmiami.com. Have a wonderful day.